Hey everybody, I'm Ryan from Intel, joined by my good buddy Tap. I'm Tom Peterson. And uh, we're here back in the studios to talk about Intel Arc Graphics. Oh. We are in the final stages. This is good. The culmination, if you will. Oh my, of, oh my. Of, uh, of months and months of t testing and benchmarking. Years and, of work, actually. Uh, lots of work by the engineering Years team. Years of work. Uh, and so we're kind of excited to, to kind of finish this part of it and start the rest of the yeah. journey, if you yeah. will. Take the uh, first step. Arc. Now, uh, so earlier this week, Pat, our CEO, actually announced some interesting information and talked about Intel Arc at uh, the Innovation He really did. Uh, I took away three main things from Pat's presentation. The first thing, he spent some time talking about the GPU market. Yeah. And he basically said, listen, this has gone out of control. The price for a GPU in the segment that we participate, which is roughly equal to a 3060, has more than doubled in the last two years. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, a survey of e-tail and retail last Friday said that an RTX 3060 on average in the US is around $418. Yes. It's absolutely crazy. And what he, what he said is that we are going to fix that. We're that gonna, all changes. That all yes, changes yes, today. Okay, that's the first <laughs> thing he said. The second thing he said, let me show you a little slide here. He said that we are going to launch the ARC a770 on October 12th, available in retail and e-tail. And it's going to be launching at an entry-level price, starting price at $329. And our limited edition board is going to be $349. Right. Now, those prices are absolutely crazy, and it's going to rebalance the market entirely. Very impressive. Very okay. impressive. I think it's amazing. Now, uh, one thing he didn't get to talk about yet is he what we're going to talk about and focus on a little and bit. And I got to tell you, I'm pretty excited about this one. We're also going to be introducing the ARC A750 on the same day, October 12th, available at Etail and Retail. And it's going to be at a starting price of $289. $289. Step back. Impressive. And it will be $289, Tom. Mic drop. It will be $289. <laughs> it will be $289 because we do have some control over how we get this into the market and we are Limited committing edition. to have this on the shelf at that price. And that's a that's key differentiator, cool. right? That's crazy. That's a huge discount. Now, what does this mean? Well, usually when we do this, we run through, you know, about 50 slides <laughs> of data true. and we go into all this technical that's detail. That's true. That's true. Today, I think it, it's in our best interest, it's in everybody else's best interest. Yes. If we just jump to that punch let's line. Let's jump to the let's punch just get line. To the Here it is. Okay, the ARC A770 is going to deliver 42% better per, per dollar compared to an RTX 3060, an overclocked RTX 3060. That's true. That's it is yeah. overclocked, right? Now, the ARC A750 is going to deliver 53% better per, per dollar compared to that same ARC RT, I'm sorry, RTX 3060 overclock edition. That's crazy. These, these are, uh, I think, wow type numbers that Take a moment. Um, uh, people are probably not expecting to see. No. Right? Even if they were guessing price and no. they were trying to, you know, figure out what our plans were no. going to be, these types of numbers are unheard of. Substantial. They are. And and the reason we're doing it is because we are bringing balance back to this market, right? Yes. The, the gamers have been kind of getting a, a, a not a great deal recently, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But now we are a big enough company. We're one of the few companies left in the world that can actually enter this market in a significant way. Now, these are bold claims. They are. Uh, these are big numbers. They that are. We need to justify, right? And so now we... we let's do we our jump, thing. We've let's do our thing. Punch line. <laughs> now let's show all the... All data. right, here we go. So get ready. <laughs> so we're going to start off with our optimized. Remember, we have a three-phase story. We have optimized titles that run really well on our architecture. Yeah. Then we have DX12, and then we have everything else. So let's go through it step by step. Okay. To start with, we've already said ARC A750 runs really well on modern titles. Some titles run really well. If you normalize this, you can see that versus an RTX 3060, we're going to do really good, you know, 15, 20% better on some cases, and that's going to continue on more modern titles. Gotcha. Okay, if we step forward again through our story and look at all DX12 and Vulkan, mm -hmm. you'll see, you know what, it's, it's pretty close. You can see somewhere we're ahead, somewhere we're behind, but at the end of the day, at 1440p versus is RTX 3060, it's pretty close. And so this is that was kind of this is kind of the culmination of where we've gotten to at this point. Exactly. Right? When you normalize this, you can see it's kind of trading blows. Yeah. I would call it a tie. I think you're going to claim something else. We win. We're, we're, we're <laughs> ahead on average in these titles. Okay. Sure. Uh, uh, we're title about five or six percent, right? Yeah. That's, that's more, more than that on DX12. By uh, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. More than that on DX12. Well, when you add it all together, I, I look at this as it's close. We win by a little bit. But let's get the rest of the data on the yeah, table. Yeah, say there's, there's, there's a data set missing. Okay, here we go. 
This is DX11 added to the Pi, it's right? A lot, it's a lot of games. It's a lot of games. And by the way, all this data is on our website. If you want to take a look at it, feel free. You can download it, crawl through it. I'm sure people are going to look for things. They will. One thing I noticed right away when I started looking at the DX11 titles is there's some big losses here, right? Yeah. It's not yeah. great. It's not great. But um, I also noticed that a lot of those losses show up in DX12 or Vulkan as well. So we have game results both in the DX12 category and the DX11. Yeah, and so what, what some game developers have done is they've taken that extra step and said, modern APIs are worth it, right? And, th and that's not just worth it for us, it's worth it for other HV's hardware vendors as well, yeah, right? So what we ought to do is take a look at some of these games and then validate what's the difference between running at uh, DX11 and DX12. So why don't we do a quick demo and we'll take a look. All right, so we just launched Tom Clancy's The Division 2. Yes, correct. Pretty cool game. I, I mean, I love apocalyptic, uh, post-apocalyptic rebuilding. Yep. And that's where we are. It's, it's really pretty interesting because on my side, we are running DX12. Yes, and so on, same, same settings. You've got DX12, I've got DX11. VSync is off. We're running uh, 25 by 14. Yep. And uh, right away, you can see the benchmark so far is about the same, mm -hmm. right? And this is just a great example of sometimes DX11, DX12 matters, sometimes it doesn't, right? It really depends on the scene and the workload in the game. So right now, you can see there's actually a little bit more of a difference, right? Uh, on your side, I see about 83. On my side, I see about yeah. 102, right? And, it, and again, it's, it's a factor of different APIs have different amounts of overhead associated with every draw call. And so depending on what's in the scene, you're going to see different results. Right. And it's important to note this game as an integrated benchmark, a really good one. We're utilizing that so we can make sure we're getting exact kind of side by side as we compare. Exactly. Any any reviewer can replicate this. Anybody at home can can try this out. Now, there's actually a bunch of titles like this, right? This mm -hmm. is not the only example. So, but what I like about it, it's got a nice integrated CAN benchmark that makes it very straightforward. And you can see as we get here to the last scene, the performance delta between DX11 on my side and 12 on yours is actually it's huge, big now. It's like huge. Significant. It's huge. And actually, you can see the GPU utilization on the DX11 side is dry. Dropping. It's really being bottlenecked by what's happening on the CPU side right now. And that's all about, you know, driver improvements over time. Very cool. Now we're going to come here to our conclusion and results. All right. I've got 92 FPS on my side. It's 78 over here. It's a difference of about 16, about 16, 17 percent. Yeah, that's kind of what we'd expect. And GPU, that you mentioned GPU utilization as a metric there too. 89 percent on, on the DX11 platform. And I've got 98 percent on Almost DX12. Almost fully utilized. So it's, it's nice. You can see the utilization. And it really does say, hey, if you have DX12 available, uh, run it. Let's go back. All right, well, that's pretty cool. We showed that, uh, what, Tom Clancy's division, we saw about 16% better. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's a good visualization of if you have a game that has DX12 as an API option or Vulkan and DX11, especially if you're running on an ARC graphics card, it just makes sense. Run the modern API. Turn on DX12, please. Get the performance. We had a similar conversation. <laughs> hey, turn on, turn, on rebar. turn on Rebar. Turn on Rebar, yeah. Turn on the modern API. I, I'm all for it. Makes it. sense. I'm with you. Yes. Okay, now, if you do that, then we're going to remove those games from our DX11 list. The duplicates. The duplicates. So in this chart, what we've done is we said, hey, DX11, that is only DX11, that belongs on this chart. Sure. And it's, it's still very valid. If it's got a DX12 or a Vulkan mode, we're going to use that mode, which right. is going to run much, much better on Arc. So that's what this is. If you normalize this, now the story becomes complete, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we still have our Vulkan wins and our DX12, kind of a little bit of win. But now you can see DX11 is not really that bad. Right? It's, it's, right, it's not, we're not winning. I, I think it's clear that we're losing, but it's not that bad, it's pretty close. Now, if you, if you average all of this out, this is where we get 6%. So even if you stopped here at a pure performance level, yes. we're competitive. Right? Yeah, the, absolutely. The absolutely. A750 is going to be about 6%, you know, give or take a, a yeah. little bit. And, and if you're more inclined to play more modern titles, you like ray tracing, you like XCSS, yep. then you're going to actually see more benefit right off the get-go. And if this is where our story ended, I, I think it would be okay. Right? But this is not where our story ended. We've already, met, we, we've already said. <laughs> we are Intel, right? So what we're doing is we're applying a correction factor. We are bringing balance back to this market. And what that means is we're selling this product at $289 right. versus NVIDIA's $418. Right. And when you apply that ratio, you can see we have solid wins across the board. So now this is, you're looking at perf per dollar, same data set. You've just basically divided by your I pricing. Just, well, I multiplied the, by our ratio, yeah. The, the blue bars went up. They all went up. By a and, lot. and there's a couple things I want to point out here. There are some games where we're 2x. Yeah. Right, we are 2x the perf per dollar versus what I'll call a very strong competitor, RTX 3060, selling boatloads, right? Right. And we are beating that card by 2x in many games. But on average, what's our on average number? 
Uh, your on average number is 53%. 53%, right? 53%. That's pretty cool. And now I would say uh, 1440p uh, for uh, this card is important, but let's take a look at all the rest of the stuff. You, we, right? You've got to look at other resolutions and the rest of the stuff. 60 more charts. Let's go. Right? No, we're not going to do that. Uh, yeah, we're not going to do not. that. Okay, so instead we're just going to show the summary, but all the data is available on the website. So if you want to see it, take a look. Okay, so here we go. 19 by 10. You can see we're also winning strongly perf per dollar. This is again ARC A750 versus the RTX 3060. What is our number, sir? 48%. So we 48% better perf per dollar on okay, average. Okay, pretty good. Let's take a look at A770, 8 gig version versus RTX 3060. Same deal. You can see the chart. This is 1440p high. What is our average for this thing? So you're going to get better total performance, absolutely. performance per dollar advantage is 42%. Okay, still really strong, but your Very absolute good. perf is higher. So if yes. you're looking to buy the top of our stack, you're gonna get higher frames per second. It's a little bit less, but still really good, right? Yep. Let's take a look at 19 by 10. 19 by 10, A770, eight gig versus RTX 3060. What is our number, sir? 37%. Still pretty good. These are, these are really strong numbers, right? All right, it's, so let's summarize it. Let's summarize it. Across, across A770, we are 42% better perf per dollar versus RTX 3060, and ARC A750, 53% better perf per dollar. That's crazy. It's, the, it, it, it's crazy. Um, I, I, I think people weren't expecting it. I hope not. And uh, I'm, I'm incredibly excited to see what people's reaction. You know, reviews are going to hit next week, right? Yeah. And that's where it, it's, you know, it's all going to come out in the wash, right? Reviewers are going to see our card's performance. They're going to see the health of our driver, which is pretty awesome. And we're going to see the feedback from the community for the first time. Yes. yes. I'm very excited. Okay. But there's one more thing I want to recap, right? Yeah. It's not just about performance. You need to be able to run ray tracing well. And we built that hardware, right? We have ray tracing units associated with our XE cores. Yes. We've got a BVH cache and we've got a thread sorting unit and they perform excellent. And we deliver great ray tracing performance, right? We also invested in XMX for, remember that matrix acceleration, yeah, course, systolic array? We implemented XCSS and we deliver you know, up to 2x performance improvement on games with XCSS enabled. That's crazy. But it's required to call yourself a modern So it's GPU. not just about performance. It's not just about performance per dollar, which we do very well. We in. do. But making sure you have the modern feature set to support Absolutely. these types of things. Absolutely. But Ryan, there's more. There's more? <laughs> there's wait. More. But wait, there's but more. But wait, what do we got? Um, so, you know, uh, we, we have some bundles that we want to talk, Let's talk about, about as well, right? So if you thought the value you were getting for this card was already fantastic, yes. uh, buyers of A770 and A750 are going to get Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 included as well, right? That's You're going to get a copy of that. And not only that. Wait, there's more? It, it's not only that. <laughs> uh, uh, it, part of, if you join the Intel Gaming Access Program, which is at game.intel.com, it's got contests and giveaways and promotions all the time. Yep. But if you are uh, a buyer of an A770 and an A750 in, in that program, you're going to get three more games. And those not, are good games, too, right? Not throwaway right? titles, no, right? No, these are not it's garbage titles. Gotham Knights, yeah. Ghostbusters, and The Settlers. Oh, pretty cool. Four, four titles along with that perf per dollar advantage that we already talked about. All right, so we are definitely leaving it on the dance floor. This is, this is all we got. This, <laughs> this is, is all we this got. Is, all the energy has been expended <laughs> on it, yes. All right, so let's recap. Yes. What do you think? Uh, my view of this is I, I, I'm incredibly excited to finally be able to tell the full story of this because yeah, yeah. we, we, we've known where this was going to go yep. and we knew where we had to get in terms of content and, and how we were going to get this, the drivers ready and how we we're going to get the technology story told. Yep. And now it's all out there and review, you mentioned reviews review are going to be next week. Cards are going to be for sale on the 12th, and it's kind of, it's all out there. I'm so excited. I really am. I mean, the engineers that are watching, I hope you're watching because I know how much work you've done. And today is the day. I really wish I had like a bottle of stuff, <laughs> have something, but I'm not allowed. But it, it is, it is a day to feel pretty good. It is. And, um, you know, I, I'm very happy and excited about the, the content we've been able to put out there. Yeah. I've been very open and honest, transparent with the, uh, with the community while we've done this. All this content that we've put on arc.intel.com is still there. You know, we talked about XCSS and RT. And if you want to go watch those videos and see the performance, and overclocking IBC, as well. Yeah. And, and we will continue to do this Absolutely. going forward. You, you mentioned to me before, like, this is the beginning of the journey. First step. Right? It feels like it's been a long journey. No, to no, get no, this here. is the first step. And, but this is the beginning. <laughs> Right, so now consumers will have these cards. I hope we're going like to continue talking about games and features and options and technology and, and bringing this out. There. Absolutely, so, I'm excited. I, I can't wait. Uh, me too. I just hope everybody uh, enjoys the cards when they get them. Yeah, and let us know what you think. So thanks everybody uh, for joining us on this uh, uh, this journey, if you will, uh, of content and releases, and uh, we hope you uh, enjoy the product.
Thanks.